everyone and their mother wants to know how I make money while living on the road. And I think you guys are going to be pretty surprised when I tell you. Surprise! I teach. Yeah, you heard me right. I teach. But I don't teach in a classroom, and I don't teach standard school subjects. I teach test prep for the SAT and ACT. In the States, these are the tests you have to take to determine what college you can get into. I've been doing this job for a while now, about five years, and I absolutely love it. See, when I was in high school, taking the SAT and ACT, I took it very lightly, and I didn't do much preparation at all. And that fact came back to bite me a little bit. So now, as a teacher, I have the opportunity to help high schoolers avoid the same pitfalls that I made and impress upon them the importance of this test in determining their future. Not only do I get to be a good influence on them and help them enjoy the process, but I help them to better their test and achieve their goals for the future. It's pretty powerful. Another reason this job is great is because I can work remotely. All I need is a good internet connection and my laptop. Well, and my books. If you guys remember during my car check, I had a box, a couple boxes full of books and this is what was in there. It's a bunch of test, test prep materials. Yes, working online it can be pretty tricky, but I find with the proper planning and a little bit of creativity and some flexibility, I'm able to do it pretty much everywhere I was in this past year. So this is the job that I normally have and I keep it year round. But in addition to teaching, I try to supplement my income depending on where I am by getting jobs and the locations. Such as the one that you guys saw while I was living in Salida, I worked at Absolute Bikes as a bike mechanic. And this tends to work pretty well. I really enjoy balance and there's something enjoyable about working with my hands in a bike shop and then working using my brain teaching. They complement each other really nicely. There's one final piece to this puzzle. And that is you guys and this channel. That's right. My goal is to continue growing this channel into a sustainable business that can help keep me on the road, keep me riding bikes, and keep me living the dream. And every single thing that you guys do helps me get a little bit closer towards that goal. Watching my videos, clicking that thumbs up button, dropping comments, sharing, or even buying a shirt. And I really, really, really appreciate everything that you guys do. You guys are awesome. For those of you looking to go above and beyond, help me grow this channel and this community that we have here. I have jumped on the Patreon and started a page. I'll link it here so you guys can hop on and check it out. Patreon is a website that helps you go one step further than watching, sharing, subscribing, uh, and actually pledge dollars to your favorite YouTube content creators out there. It's a great way to show your love and get something in return. And keep your eye out. I'm going to be adding some pretty cool rewards on there that I think you guys will enjoy. It all helps me get one step closer to achieving the ultimate dream. It's living free, riding hard, and getting stoked. Seth is curious how I stay clean while I'm on the road. Where do I take my showers and how often do I get to take them? Well, let's start with how often I get to take them. And I'll start by saying most, most everyone takes showers way more than they need to. And I'm not saying that I'm like disgusting and I never shower. I'm just saying, you know, there's definitely been times when I've gone out on long rides, gotten extremely sweaty and gone home and got to sleep in my tent without showering. And there's nothing wrong with that. As for where I shower, I shower anywhere I have access to some water that I can, that I can use. I've showered in many different places and oftentimes they're not ideal, but hey, Cold water gets the job done just as much as steaming hot. I'll show you guys some of the places that I've been in the past. Kind of like this. This would be a great spot. Do I know what I mean? This is like, I would put my soap and my towel right there. And then there's like, a, there was a flat area of the water right there. Sometimes I'm lucky enough that there are public facilities I can have access to. And I would not hesitate to use this beach shower. Every now and then, I even get to enjoy a nice hot shower, thanks to 
good friends I have around the country. There's two things that I think are absolutely essential for staying clean on the road. First is an environmentally friendly soap because you're going to be bathing in places like streams, rivers, uh, the ocean, lakes. You need to be taking care of the environment just like it's taking care of you. Second, when you get in a pinch and there's no water, you need to have a backup plan. And the backup plan are baby wipes. With wet wipes or baby wipes, whatever you want to call them, you can take a bird bath anywhere. And it's oftentimes a really nice stopgap in between places that you find showers. There's a good bit that you can do to plan around taking showers too. Anytime I'm going and looking for a campsite, I always search for one that has some water nearby. It just makes life easier. You can take a shower, you can clean off pots and pans, you can uh, get water to filter it. It's just really convenient. Alexander Sally wants to know, what's a good way to spice up your local and make it more exciting again? And I think this is such a good question. It's something that's probably relevant to most of us. First, take it a little bit slower. Most of the time when we go out to ride the trail, or at least me, I aim for speed. And you'd be surprised when you slow it down. The trail looks a whole lot different. You'll see things you never used to see before. Little trail nuggets. Go to the trail with a different objective. Not every time that you go out has to be a get fit, ride fast, be done with it, you know, get some exercise ride. Sometimes I'll go out simply to explore and kind of enjoy the outdoors. Sometimes it'll be a social ride. I'll grab a beer, grab a buddy, and hit the trails and make a point of stopping and just hanging out. Take a buddy with you. A, always a great way to spice up a trail is to get a different perspective on it. So grab your mate, hit the trail. No one ever takes the exact same lines, so let them lead and see how they attack the trail. You might be able to find something new and fun through that as well. Also, when bringing a buddy, things are bound to be competitive, and that's a really great way to make it more exciting. Uh, you know, someone that's on the same skill level as you, that you can push each other, uh, it always, it makes even the most tame trails exciting to me. Finally, pick a skill that you want to work on and find a place on your trail to practice it over and over. I like to go find a really nice berm or a jump or, you know, a, a nice technical section and pick a skill that I'm trying to master and take that skill and apply it to that slice of trail and work it over and over and really get to where I have a mastery of that skill that I'm working on. To get a better idea of what I'm talking about, go check out some BMX videos. These guys are creative geniuses when it comes to making the most of a single spot. That's what they call it in BMX when they find something they like to ride, a spot. They'll spend hours, even days, just repeatedly visiting this spot, working on skills and coming up with new things that they can do on it. It's pretty awesome, actually. So what do you guys think? Anything I missed? I plan on swapping bikes or upgrading to a carbon frame? Eh, probably not. Not unless I find an insane deal. Hardtails, yay or nay? Definitely yay. What's my favorite mountain bike destination of the year? Probably a tie between Moab and Salida. Amazing trails, amazing people to ride with. How do I deal with bike issues and mechanicals on the road? Well, at first it was a lot of learning and a trial and error because I didn't know the most. And eventually I've learned to become more self-sufficient. Also, owning my own toolbox definitely, definitely helps. Anthony Hahn and 27 other people want to know what are my go-to foods when I'm out camping on the road? And do I eat out a lot? The last part is an easy answer, it's a no. Eating out is always, always expensive and I try to keep my meal per person at or under $3 every meal. And I know that sounds really, really cheap, but I promise you it's achievable through grocery shopping and Subway. <laughs> Here I have my basket from in my car that has some leftover staples. Uh, so instead of just telling you guys, I'm gonna show you what I uh, always make sure to have on me. Like a sweet and salty, just some trail mix. It's always nice to have something that you can fill up on when you didn't get enough of whatever meal. Here, an absolute staple for me, I love these things. Uh, almonds, always have coffee. Uh, nothing fancy, I do cowboy coffee, just regular cheap big tin and then some coffee filter, 
drop it in the coffee filter, drop the coffee, make it like a tea bag and drop it in your coffee mug. Boom, coffee. Tortillas are great. PB&J, absolutely, peanut butter. Normally I have an even bigger thing of peanut butter, but I have to have peanut butter. Things that don't go bad are great. Beans are always a great source of um, calories and very cheap, dollar or under you can find them. Unless you're in like a small town at a general store, then you get screwed. Ah, here's a good one, tuna. A really, a really um, common dinner goes something like this. Ramen, tuna, beans in a bowl. Sometimes I'll get like uh, at a dollar store, you can get a dollar uh, vegetable, can of like mixed vegetables with okra, tomato, and beans and stuff. And I'll put that in instead of the beans and that's a really good meal. It's like, that's a $3 meal. So that's pretty solid and it's extremely filling. So lots of ramen. And I have a big thing of rice here and this is definitely the most uh, uh, affordable form of rice but it ends up using a lot of gas to, to cook it. And I found that that wasn't practical at all. So stopped doing that type of rice and started doing rice like this. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's already cooked. And all you have to do is warm it up. Super easy, absolute essential because when you're eating on the road, you can't always eat the best food. You know, you can't afford it and you can't cook it. So you need a way to spice it up and give it some flavor. And this isn't personally my favorite. I like sriracha or uh, tapatillos but always have to have a hot sauce. So these are like emergency meals if I if I don't uh, have any other food or if I'm going backpacking um, and I want to uh, bring something. These are one of the, some of the ready-made. Um, these are Mountain House oatmeal. Definitely, my breakfast every morning is oatmeal. And I'll try to have some sort of fruit with me like banana or apple because those are super cheap. Just put that with some peanut butter in the oatmeal. That's my breakfast every single morning.